as we learned in the last lecture not for all the errors this is operational property will be true in our express app some of the errors are created by mongoose and there those errors will not have is operational property set to true and the code which we have written for the production environment so basically this code here if the error is not an operational error in that case we are sending some generic error to the client with a generic error message okay that's because if the error does not have this is operational property set to true in that case it will be treated as a non operational error and in that case this generic error message will be sent to the client only when the error is operational error that means when this is operational property is set to true we are going to send an actual error message to the client like we are doing here so when an error is created by mongoose instead of sending this generic error message to the client what we want is we want to send actual error to the client and in order to do that we will have to set this is operational property to true for those mongoose errors so as we learned in the last lecture if the errors are operational errors then only we are going to send the actual error message to the client otherwise we are going to send the generic error message to the client and we are going to do this in case of production environment in the development environment we are not checking for is operational or anything like that we are simply sending the error message no matter if the error is operational error or it is a programming error or it is some other type of error we are sending all the errors to the client in case of development environment but in case of production environment for security purposes we are only sending the operational errors to the client if the error is not an operational error that means if this is operational is not set to true on the error object in that case we are sending some generic error to the client with a simple user friendly error message now there are three types of errors that might be created by mongoose and these errors we need to mark as operational errors so that we can send the actual error message to the client when the error occurs so when a mongoose error occurs instead of sending this generic error message to the client we want to send the actual error message to the client so that the client will know what has went wrong now one of the errors that can be created by mongoose is when we try to provide an invalid value for the movie id there it will not be able to cast that value to object id type and it will throw an error let me show you that with an example so let's go to postman and here if we provide an invalid id for the movie object for example some random value like this and we have tried this earlier if i click on this send button you see here we are getting an error and this error is coming from here because currently we are in the development mode so when we are in the development mode in the response we are sending these four properties for the error we are sending the status we are sending the error message stack trace and error object so if i go back to postman that's what you will see here the status is 500 so the default status value we have this error message cast to object id failed for value whatever value we have passed here for the id okay then we have the stack trace basically where the error has occurred and what type of error has occurred and all those informations and then we have the error object itself and in the error object you will see different types of properties for example the value what is the value type then what is the actual value we are passing for the id here then the property for which we have passed the value basically the field for which we are passing the value so in this case it is underscore id field what type of error has occurred so in this case it is cast error so all these informations we have on this error object so using this information what we are going to do is we are going to create a new error object and there we will set the is operational property to true and we will also provide some user friendly error message to the client currently if i go back to postman this error message is not that much user friendly it is still cryptic but we are going to create a new message which will be user friendly and easy to understand for the end users so let's go ahead and let's do that so here where we are calling this prod errors before this what i'm going to do is i'm going to check the type of error so if we go back to postman here we have the error object and on that error object we have the name property so the error name is cast error so we are going to check this name property here we can say error dot name if it is equal to cast error then we want to do something now what do we want to do here let's say in this case we want to call a function maybe i will call that function cast 
error handler so we need to create this function we have not created it and to that we will pass the error object okay now let's go ahead and let's create this function so let me scroll up and let me create this function here okay so this function is going to receive the error object i'll call it err and inside this function first of all i'm going to create a user friendly error message so here i'm going to create a variable i'll call it maybe message and let's simply create a user friendly message and here let's say invalid value and then we are going to set the value so for that here i'm going to use this template detail syntax now if we go back to postman there you will see that here we have the value property to which the value which we have passed for this id field that has been assigned so we are going to use this property so here we will say era dot value so invalid value whatever value we have passed for field and then again we are going to use the template literal syntax here and there we want to use the field name so here for the field name we can use this path property because it is this path property which is assigned with the actual field for which we have sent the value so in this case it is underscore id field so we are going to use this property let's go back and here let's say error dot path okay so this is our error message now we are going to create a new instance of our custom error class in order to use this custom error class we also need to import it so at the top let's create a variable let's call it custom error and here we need to provide the path for that file so from here let's move one folder up there we need to go to utils folder and in there we have our custom error class okay all right so here we are creating a new instance of this custom error class there to the constructor we need to pass the value for message parameter so for the message parameter i'm going to pass this message variable here and then we also need to pass the value for status code so in this case the status code will be 400 that means bad request and we are going to return this from here so from here we are returning a new custom error object okay so when we are calling this cast error handler function here it is going to return us that error object an instance of this custom error object so let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable and we are going to store it back to the error object now here we are receiving this error object as the parameter so instead of manipulating this error object which we are receiving as a parameter what we will do is we will create a copy of this error object and we will manipulate that copy instead of manipulating the error object which we are receiving in the parameter okay so for that before this if statement let's go ahead and let's create a new variable and i'm going to create this variable using let keyword i will simply call it e for error and then we want to create a copy of this error object so here i'm going to use destructuring syntax for the destructuring syntax we need three dots and then the error object so basically we want to destructure this error object in that case each property of this error object will become an individual property and then we are wrapping those individual properties within these curly braces so those properties will become a property of this object which we are creating using these curly braces and that object we are assigning to this e variable and now instead of manipulating this error object itself we are going to manipulate this e object so this e is also an error object which is just a copy of the actual error object which we have received in the parameter or uh, let me actually call it as err okay so that it will be more meaningful okay and here also it should be err and then when we are calling this prod errors function there also let's go ahead and let's pass this error object now currently this application is running in development mode so in order to test this logic we need to run this application in production mode currently if i go to the postman and if i make a request we'll still see the same result because in case of development we are calling this dev errors and in the dev errors you know we are simply returning the error object with the status message stack trace and error object but this logic which we have written here it is for production so we need to run this application now in production mode for that let me first go ahead and let me terminate this process for that i will 
press Ctrl C on keyboard, type Y. So the process is terminated. Now, in order to run this application in production mode, we need to set the node underscore inv to production. And then after that, we need to use end, and then we need to run nodemon. So here we can say nodemon space server.js. Basically, we want to run the server.js file. Okay, so this command you already know. We use it for running a JavaScript file. But before we run this file, what we want is we want to set the node environment to production. And that's what we are doing here by using this set keyword and setting the node environment to production. Now, let me go ahead and let me run this command. So now the application should start in production mode. And let's also scroll up and let's see what is the node environment type. So here you see node environment is production. Let's go to Postman now. And now let's make a request to the same URL. Now here we are providing an invalid ID value for the movie ID. So in this case, this value cannot be converted to object type. So that will be the actual error. But let me go ahead and let me make this request. And here you see, for some reason, we are still receiving this generic error message where the status is error and message is something went wrong please try again later so this is the generic error message let's see why is that let's go back to visual studio so here we are checking if the error name is cast error in that case we are calling this cast error handler so this looks good if i go to this cast error handler there we are creating the message we are creating an instance of this custom error class and we are returning it from here so we should be getting that error message and that should be assigned to this error object so here let's first check whether this if statement is getting called or not so for that let me go ahead and let me write a console.log statement here and let's say if statement called okay let's save the changes again and let's go ahead and let's make a request again let's go back to vs code and if you notice for some reason this if statement is not getting logged let's actually scroll up and see if somewhere it has been logged so yeah i don't see that log message logged anywhere here so for some reason this if statement is not getting called and to check why is that let's go ahead and let's copy this console.log statement let's paste it here and here let's go ahead and let's log the error object itself okay let's save the changes again and let's go ahead and let's make a request again let's go back to visual studio and here something has been logged so you can see that error object has been logged and there we want to see the name of the error but here for some reason it does not have a name property you see it does not have a name property here okay so basically here we are setting the status code to 500 on the error object we are setting the status then we are checking if the environment is production or not okay then we are destructuring this error object so here we have the same error object it is just a copy of that error object all right after that we are logging this error so till here it is good but then on that error we are checking if we have the error name or not and if it is equal to this cast error or not but if you see when we are logging this error object for some reason it does not have the name property here it has all other fields but it does not have a name property but if i go ahead and if i run it in development mode so again let me stop this process by pressing ctrl c and let's run this again but this time i want to run it in development mode okay let's go back to postman and let me make a request here in this case as you can see we have this name property on this error object so here this error object which we are passing to this dev errors it has the name property so something wrong is happening here when we are destructuring that error object so instead of doing it like this let me for now comment this line and here let's go ahead and let's use this error object itself instead of using the copy of that error object we are going to use this error object itself okay let's save the changes and let me stop the process again and let's start the process again 
but this time in the production mode. Okay, so the application is now running in the production mode. Let's quickly verify that. Okay, so the node in is production. Let's go to Postman. Let's make a request again. Something has went wrong. Let's go back. And here we have this reference error. Error is not defined. Oh, so let's comment this console.log statement as well. Let's save the changes again. Let's go back to Postman. Let's make a request. And now we have the proper error message. So status is 400 and the message is invalid value. This value for field underscore ID. Okay. Let's make this error message a little bit more meaningful. So let's go back to VS code and let's go to this method. And here let's say invalid value for and then instead of using value here, I will use path and then here I'll use colon and the value. Okay, let's save the changes. Let's go back to Postman and let's make a request again. So now it looks good. Now the field can be anything. Currently it is underscore ID, but it can also be any other field. And since we are using this error dot path, instead of this error dot path, that field name will be displayed. In this example, since we are passing an invalid value for ID, that's why the field is ID and the value is this value. All right, so now our application and our functionality is working as expected. There was something wrong when we were using the destructuring syntax there. So basically this line of code was creating the issue. But anyway, now everything is working as expected. So here we fixed the problem of invalid ID value. So earlier when we were passing invalid ID value, we were getting some cryptic message from the mongoose. And that time it was also a non-operational error. But now it is an operational error because now we are creating this error using the custom error object. And we are also creating a meaningful message on that error object. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.